With SA Hip Hop being a staple within the SA music industry, many artists both past and present are able to capture the hearts, minds and ears of many consumers, but a few are really capable of doing so whilst making an impact on the game. Now Shane Patrick Hughes, or better known as Shane Eagle, is one prolific rapper who's managed to do both at such a young age, but to truly appreciate his rise and stardom, we need to take a look back into his background. Now born on the 7th of June 1996, Shane is originally from Robbie Ridge in Johannesburg and is born to a coloured mother and Irish father. He later moved to Kempton Park with his father when he was just five after his parents split up, but he would still regularly visit his mother at Robbie Ridge where he made new friends and started working on his rap skills. Now whilst brushing up on his rapping, he would participate in a couple of talent shows or whilst completing his high school career. He recorded his very first song when he was just 13 and it actually got good reviews from people around him. Now after high school, Shane got a major opportunity when he entered the rapping reality TV show, The Hustle which aired on Vuzu. The whole premise behind the show was to scout and develop new rap talents by choosing them from social media and placing them in a house with other contestants where they would test their rapping skills and battle each other. Now he managed to finish in fourth place which allowed him to garner a bigger audience, even bigger than the winner himself, Big Star Johnson. Now, even though he didn't win the competition, Shane still treats it as a blessing in disguise because he would have had to sign to a label if he won, essentially being controlled or restricted with his art, but being able to stay independent and start his own label alongside Vaughn Thiel with Eagle Entertainment, while it's something he's grateful for. I was just having this conversation a few minutes ago about the hustle. I didn't, my main goal was never to win the show. You know, I just wanted to be on the show. You know, in the back of my mind, I was like, if I do win it, that'll be cool. But I think the best thing that ever happened to me was not winning that show. But I felt like I needed to put myself in a position where I could show the world, or show, show South Africa at least, that, yo, there's something in that kid, you know. And then luckily someone saw that. And then, you know, here I am now. But I, I, I did, I, I put my mind to it put my heart in it man I didn't treat it like it was just the show put everything into it and then you know it kind of shows and everything that I've been trying to achieve for myself so yeah man it's been crazy you know, about TV you on the hustle and yeah. you were quoted actually saying that you're happy that you you didn't win it, it was mm -hmm. a blessing yeah tell us about that uh, I feel like not winning the show was definitely the best thing that ever happened to me because it just changed the, um, the whole route I was gonna take if I won I would have had to be signed you know, a lot of other things would have had to happen, but right. not, not, not winning gave me the blessing to go be independent, start my own company, start my own label, and just keep doing it. So let's speak about that. So you've chosen to go independently. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are scared to do that. Yeah. It, you're taking on a lot of responsibility. Uh -huh. It's super expensive. Yeah. Um, and you did it. Why? Um, and how's it going? Because it's freedom. It's yeah. like the best thing for any type of you or for a human being is to be free mm. mentally physically just freedom and being independent means i'm free it means i can make the music i want to connect with the fans how i want to um i feel like being an artist uh, in its purest form i don't believe that someone in a corporate or someone who's wearing a suit and tie can tell me how, how to make to music so now after competing on the hustle Shane was offered to become a presenter on V Entertainment, which aired on Vuzu as well. Now after doing so while on the competition, fans were expecting his debut album, but unfortunately his focus wasn't there, which left a lot of fans disappointed. But fast forward to August 2017, Shane dropped his highly anticipated debut album Yellow, which had the game in a frenzy. I mean with singles like Let It Flow and Need Me, it's no surprise that it took Best Hip Hop Album at the 2018 Summer Awards. Hey, 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 what's up, man? We're out here backstage, and man, I'm with an award winner tonight, Shane Eagle. How you doing, sir? I'm all good. You're all good. Yeah, man, I'm, I, I'm super proud, man. I ain't even gonna lie, man. I'm, su I'm, su I'm super proud, man. Um, and, that's, and that's simply because I feel like real hip hop is actually back and actually, you know, really doing the things, man. How you feeling? Um, I feel blessed. I don't even know what to say. I just feel blessed, man. Yeah. Um, yo, man. Um, I really, I, I really have to ask you this question, man, because you know you're one of the dudes that actually 
came from the hustle and you know from the hustle you know moved on you know to doing your thing on Vuzu and then you dropped an album and that album actually made people go wild how does it feel to see yourself winning so much and when you actually listen to the album it's not even an album that's even going by the sound that everybody's currently doing right now and you know you walk away with an award um yeah man it's crazy we, we put a lot of time and effort into making this music and yeah. to see how people are receiving it is a blessing you know so we just keep it going keep it all the way to the top man now if there was any other way to make your name heard in the game and solidify it while dropping an album like yellow was the best way to do it now with shane doing so well for himself getting appreciation from fans and peers alike hosting the yellow tour as well as winning awards things were going so well for the guy but despite that shane wasn't immune to some controversy as well now hip-hop is a competitive sport and sometimes fans may interpret lyrics from an artist and speculates that they may be taking shots at another particular artist now on his single let it flow off of yellow shane rapped the following line saying your favorite rapper is a pop star darling now fans speculated that shane might have been taking shots at his mentor the super mega himself aka here from Simbiwe who asks uh please ask the homie if he's beefing with shane eagle or not no <laughs> I, I thought it was it was actually pretty funny because um shane eagle uh came to to my crib to play me his album i think it was towards the end of last year mm. you know and i think i've always been really cool with them you know the hustle i would like to think i played a part in putting shane eagle uh in a position where he could you know do something for sure, himself sure sure um, and and uh, he said uh, he had this line that says uh, something about your favorite rapper is a pop star. And you know I hadn't heard it right, but I had been going around saying, "Yo, I want to be a pop star." So it, it, in the timing, it kind of. But wait, wait, no, hold on, let me explain. Yeah. So you know, people, whether it is directed to <laughs> me or it isn't, I don't know. But you know, people will be like, "Oh, they talking about you, dog. They saying you want to be a pop star." So I thought, "Hey, man, when I come back, let me post a, a, a caption that says, your your favorite rapper is a pop star.' Like, yo, yeah, I'm huge. I'm super popular." <laughs> and then he was, I think he's in in Amsterdam or something on Instagram, and then he posted a caption that said, "Out in Europe, doing bigger things." Wow. So I thought, "Ah, oh, this is pretty funny." So, but it's cool, man. It's like a joke. Well, at least I think it is. So, have you guys uh, bumped into each other? Have you spoken? Man, if I see Shane Eagle, I'm sure everything's going to be great, man. We're going to have a good laugh. Good. All right, well, Francis. Now, even though there was a misconception with those bars and AKA not taking any offense to them, things still took a turn for the worst when AKA tweeted the following saying, I want all artists to take notes. You do not need to sign a deal with a major to make your dreams come true and handle your business. We did this independently with an independent distributor. Now Shane didn't take too kindly to this tweet as he said, fuck out of here nigga, you've been signed. Now Shane responding really set AKA off as he went on a crazy rant, first stating that if you have a problem with me, please tell me, fuck out of here nigga question mark, since when? He continued by saying, nigga, I created you. Now with AKA being a judge and a mentor on the hustle, he genuinely felt like he created Shane but anyways, he still continued by saying, The worst part is, I actually like you and what you're doing. Today you talk to me like this, like I'm one of your fucking lighty friends. He followed up by saying, Sis man, these lighties are disrespectful. That's why I keep smacking them. He still continued by saying, I know it hurts because my album came out a week ago and has already gone gold. And yours has been out for nearly a year or something and is what? Here's some help. A reply something for you to hold on to good luck i hope this helps your cause he still followed up by saying the truth is the kid doesn't like me because he came to my house played me his album and asked me to jump on i told him i didn't dig it now he's upset i mean i let this little nigga into my home he concluded by saying i apologize for my previous tweets i should have handled it better like an adult i guess i actually liked the kid and that's why i took it to heart now it's clear that their relationship had hit rock bottom at this point and to add more fuel to the fire shane dropped the response towards aka with gustavo where he had lines like young nigga doing well couple trophies on the shelf nigga your shit wasn't real nigga your bitch wasn't real nigga that paper won't last you think that album gonna last man that shit's so trash i'm just all up in my bag 
Only gonna talk about this one time, then we leave it in the past. Move the fuck up on my way, inchy 30 and some change. No, it's not easy seeing young niggas coming off for your place. You was talking online, then you fall for the bait. No, it's over for you, nigga. Over for you, no debate. Now, Shane also addressed what he said on the track. Check what he had to say. <laughs> I it, it wasn't directed to anyone. It was addressing someone. Okay. So like it's a whole song. Uh huh. And then the second verse, I had to give it to uh, some of these old dudes. Okay, hold on. Let's not talk about somebody. Let's yeah. Get to the crux of it. Uh, AKA yeah. Okay, so the beef is a real thing. Um. Well, what, what, what the situation? For, for me, that's funny that like you would call it beef. Yeah. Like with someone like. That's that. why I change and say situation. Yeah, situation. I was just like on Gustavo. I had to um, like some people go to social media. Yeah, yeah. I go to the music. So my phone's ringing. I go to the music. Um, yeah. So I, so in a sense, I was just replying to uh, his tweets and what he was talking about. That's interesting because that takes a, like all the way back to hip hop. Mm. Like exactly. Like the way it should be done. Exactly. Yeah. Like we, I, exactly. You know what I mean? A, a, a few of the the realest people I used to look up to took it to the music, and for me, what I want to see. Yeah. Is um is uh, uh the real thing, like the real life thing. Like mm. it's easy for you to go online and talk about stuff, but let's see each other and uh, see what uh, it's really about. You know, it's easy to go online and uh, tweet about things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I said four words, and then people were just like pouring their hearts out. So, have you guys like seen each other like since the song? No. Let me ask a question. Yeah. Is it necessary? Yeah. To see each other? No. The, no. the situation. Mm. Oh, definitely. Is there no way that it could be, like, fixed? I feel like everything in life has a way to be fixed. Yeah. You know what I mean? For me, it's just, um... For me, just with someone who's a real person. Yeah. Um, I don't, uh... Do the whole social media thing. Like, talking about things online. If you got a problem... You know where I'm at. I Look, know where you're at. I agree Pick with that. Pick up the phone. Pick up, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so for me, like, as a rap artist, like, if you go online and you talk about, ooh, ooh, I did this, I made you, I did this and that, like, I don't go, I don't tweet. I, I put out records and I'm, I'm replying to exactly what you said. And uh, so it's, it's more so like a whole song. And then the second verse, I was just saying, I guess, like, maybe as a young dude, maybe when you get to, like, Dirty and some change, it becomes difficult. It becomes different. <laughs> now, fast forward to a year later, it looked like they had beef at that out, with Shane tweeting the following saying, Someone tell AKA to send me a pair of those Reeboks and we good. I'm a UK9. And Mega responded by saying, I'll also unblock you on Twitter. And for a second, it actually looked like they could actually drop a track together, but unfortunately, that never happened. Now, after that whole debacle, Shane went on a crazy run doing big things, with him dropping his EP Never Grow Up and actually getting a feature from one of Dreamville's artists, Bass, on his track Apex. He also went on to dropping his first mixtape Dark Moon Flower, which had some really standout features from the Hicks, Lutz, Bass, Santi, J Tech, Nash DC, and a few others. He also made it onto Times Square with his mixtape Dark Moon Flower. He also went gold for his EP Never Grow Up and his single let it flow and lastly he also managed to secure a big interview on apple music with the radio personality ebro from ebro in the morning so everything was going so well for the rapper but eventually there has to be some downs and that came in the form of shane parting ways with his business partner von Thiel. and then uh well in terms of eagle entertainment it had uh it's fair and i'm sure it's still uh, yeah, still, it's still up and running. Yeah. And then your departure yeah. from it, how does that come about? So, at the end of 2019, so I think like to, 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 to explain like why I left, so I resigned my shares officially in the top of 2020. I signed over my percentages, anything that was, any assets owned by the business, I didn't take what yeah, my 50% I, was. I'll tell you what the streets are saying. The streets are saying you, you did it for free. Like you didn't even take a settlement of anything. Nothing. You're like just yeah. like take everything. I'm out. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, bro. That's the streets are telling the truth. I thought the streets were gonna say something no, else. No, I was, no, like, no, I was no, like, no, let no, me no, set the no, record straight. No. I was like, what? Yeah, I took nothing. I took nothing. I, I definitely did. I took nothing. Um, all the assets that we had built, even money, I had lost money on certain uh, projects like the Yellow Tour. You know, personally, lost lost some income there. 
But it was it was fine, man. And, and the reason I did that, the reason I I signed the shares over from music perspective, from asset perspective, mm -hmm. we had vehicles, you know, we had a few things, bro, some mm -hmm. equipment. I just said, yo, guys, take the whole thing, because um, the reality is, like, on a on a on a basic uh, principle level, both personally and professional, the I wasn't seeing eye to eye, you know. Mm. I wasn't seeing eye to eye with them anymore. And I think, like, once once a couple of situations occurred and I realized that oh wow like we're not on the same time both professionally and personally the thing with that is it's it's very difficult to come back from something like that with a person like me because I can't lie to myself you know once I've seen it I'm like once I've seen it in someone I'm just like oh man this is unfortunate and I make decisions pretty quickly and pretty pretty firmly I mean I did it when I quit my job because I believed and I looked at it and I went this I know this doesn't this, if you if you hold on, this doesn't end well. So, so I made a decision then. It was about November, December. I took off. I didn't go on any shows. I let the boys. They ran with it. I said, Yo, I need to really think about this because I've done like some incredible. We've done some incredible work together, man. We achieved like great things, and um, making that decision is not easy. Yeah. So I took the time in December to think about it. January, I knew what I was gonna do. Met up, signed it over, and then since then. Top of 2020, lockdown happened and all that stuff ended up happening. We couldn't predict that. And yeah, I just, I just haven't uh, spoken to, to them since. Now with Vaughn parting ways with Shane and Eagle Entertainment, so did Shane's in-house producer, Shooter Coombs. What was the, the reception of Shooter rolling with you? You know what I mean? Because Shooter being so close in being the architect of what we new as the Eagle Entertainment sound. sound yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Also, just to add on, on yeah. to that, what's the conversation then? That yeah. happens there, yeah. Mm. Uh, man, that's, yeah, that's very valid part of the story, bro. Um, so, I make the decision. I'm going to bounce. This time, Shooter's actually, this is this is also something, Shooter, Shooter has, Shooter had been living with me since 20... We dropped Yellow in August 2017. Shooter moved into my crib in or in December 2017. He had some, he had some like, you know, things he was going through. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, no, pull up, bro. Like, you, you, you my bro, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he lived with me and my brother Jade for all the way up until, all the way up until uh, the, I think the top of 2021, Shooter got his first place, you know, by himself, yeah. And um, he got that obviously through the through the Stalo opportunity. So when when I decided to leave, I remember coming back after that December break I took, and they had done a run of shows, and you know I'd come back and he was at the crib, man, because he he stayed with me, and and we we never had a problem. So yeah. we 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 we'd pull up, and he we'd be talking, and he'd he'd say to me like, "Yo, bro, like how you feeling?" Because he knew what was he knew everything. He was yeah. privy to all the conversations, bro, like the meetings, the like even when we when we tried to do like a like a um, let's link up and chat yeah. about situation, the, the, yeah. the situation that happened because of course bro I'm not like I know I understand emotion so when things flared up take a step back yeah. alright cool let's arrange another sit down and Shooter was part of all that you know yeah. so he was privy to the entire thing it wasn't hearsay yeah so mm -hmm. he he then so when I came back and I told him hey man I've I've made my decision. This is what I'm gonna do. Like he was obviously very hurt, you know. Like yeah. he was felt torn. Naturally. But, he, but I'm sure he wasn't surprised. No, he wasn't surprised. He actually knew it was yeah. gonna. He just to hear it, I think, just like hurt him. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, "Damn." And then I just said, "Hey, my boy, but like, you do like honestly, thing. you do your thing. You know, you do your thing, bro. Like you yeah. do what's right for you. Yeah. You, bro, you still here with me. You still live in the crib. It's no problem, dog. This is not one of those things. It's not yeah. like." Pick a side, bro. We're not. I'm a grown ass man, my yeah. G. You know, like yeah. I'm not. This is not gang gang. Like, yeah. fuck you know. Like, I'm a West fucking, side of East yeah, side. Yeah, you know? like, I'm like, it's not that. Yeah. You know, so so it's not weird. So he was like, guy, right, cool. And then I think he just went through his own journey, there, his own process. And um, around about the time I signed my shares over, I think there was a final, there was a final meeting that I had with. It was me, Shane, Nicole, Shooter. And in that meeting, there was a discussion that happened, and I said, "This is my this is my decision." Yeah. I think there was a, there was a certain reaction and a certain type of um, conversation that happened with sort of brought Shooter in. Yeah. And I think after that, Shooter 
I, I saw a change in him, you know, mm. because I had made my, and I'd moved on. And then a couple of weeks later, I remember Shooter coming to me and going, hey bro, like after everything that I've just experienced, after everything we've just gone through, like I, I can't see myself like doing this thing like without you, you know? Damn. And then um, I just said, hey man, it's, it's really on, that's really, up to you, bro. I said to him, I don't know what I'm gonna do exactly yet. Yeah. Yo. But I'm but I'm but trust me, like we're gonna figure it out. Like, we'll figure it out. Yo. Now Shooter worked heavily with Shane on Yellow and Dark Moon Flower, basically being the foundation and architect for Shane's sound. And with them parting ways with him as well, the rapper was forced to take a new direction with his sound. Now taking a page out of his idol's book, just like J. Cole. Shane later released a two-track EP titled Sun, Baby Blue Force, which had fans anticipating his next studio album. Considering that he was absent from the game for almost two years, now both tracks reminded fans of how good of a rapper Shane really is, and to satisfy them, he later dropped his sophomore album Green during March of 2022. Now because of a lack of a rollout plan, a lack in promotion, no visuals, merch or even public appearances, Green didn't perform as good compared to his previous work. Now that's not to say that the music wasn't good, but with Shane not bringing life to the album in any way, it unfortunately went unnoticed and created a narrative that he fell off. I mean, for the longest of times, Shane was in the same conversations as Nash DC and A. Reese, being considered as one of the leaders of the new wave. But with Green not doing so well amongst fans and listeners alike, the narrative switched to Blackie being part of the three most dominant rappers alongside Reese and Nasty, and Shane no longer in the conversation. So something was definitely missing from what we were all used to getting from Shane, whether it was a lack in motivation, his ex-business partner Vaughn no longer being by his side to guide him, or even Shooter Coombs not creating the foundation for Shane, it's safe to say that things didn't look the same as they used to be. He later went on to starring in the reality TV show Love and Hip Hop SA, which many believed was a bad career move on his part, as they believed it took away from the music, further fueling the narrative that he fell off. Now since then, he later came out to state that nobody can fuck with me this year. Now he has yet to deliver because besides dropping his new single Just To Hold You, we still haven't seen or heard much from him, which doesn't look promising. But despite that, Shane has proven that he's very much capable of delivering good projects and capturing the hearts and ears of many fans. I guess we just need to allow for time to run its course and I'm sure we'll see him redeem himself and dominate the music scene once again.